it's something that like most people dream about doing is such an amazing feeling and obviously it's getting closer and closer and to have a home Olympics in the home ground and having the home support is, is what obviously I dream about and hopefully I can be there. Some mornings are harder than others but I think you just get into a routine after a while. Like I tend to go to bed quite early so that helps I think and then luckily I have enough time to have a nap in the day. Yeah. So uh Did you ever feel like you don't want to get up? Yeah, especially in the winter time when it's raining and really cold and you've got to de-ice your car and put all your layers on, but I have to do it. Yes, training is very hard. It's hard in early mornings and pushing yourself to the maximum every day and we train 10 sessions in the pool a week and it's two hours each session so that's 20 hours in the pool and plus gym sessions as well so it's hard work but we do it because we want to do well and we enjoy it. I mean they're all ranked in the top 10 in the world and the only problem is that they're all in events that there's a lot of competition from within Britain so they have racing other people that are faster or coming up behind them that are younger so and on, on that day <coughs> on, the, on the trials right she has a bad day or even somebody has a, another great day there's nothing you can do about it so you just have to be ready to do your best and you know the good thing for some of them is there's somebody in more than one event that they can qualify in I understand that I'm trying to get them to go fast almost every day and it's not going to happen every day but that's what I'm doing I'm taking them to the to the point where they fail and then uh, and then we back off but um, yeah, they have, you have to train fast. There's no way to get to that level top 10 in the world without training fast and doing it consistently. Well, we train 10 times in the pool for two hours each time. And then we do three gym sessions on top of that. And then there's physio and um, massage and nutrition and like all kinds of stuff that's behind the scenes and like psychology that people don't like associate with training. Uh, sometimes it's really tough and I sleep a lot during the day. I've actually deferred my university this year to focus 100% on my training. And um, yeah, I'm tired a lot and my social life suffers a little bit, but I've made sacrifices. But I don't really see it as a sacrifice because like, I have great friends that I've met from training and I travel the world, so it's great. It's always difficult. That's, I think that's always an athlete worry, being ill or injured. And I think we've got great support here to have physios and massage people around us so I think we have that great support around us so if we do get a niggle or injured or something they can sort us out. What you put in your body like fuels you in your performance so like even if you feel full after eating something that's unhealthy you're not getting the same kind of nutrients so you might not have as much energy to swim as fast. My friends are very involved because I train with them every day and my closest friends because we go through so much together and we want each other to do well. And the family, they've helped me so much throughout my career, I wouldn't have been able to do it without them. Um, I don't get to see them very often though because I live like 300 miles away from home but they still support me as much as they can and I wouldn't have been able to do anything without them. So It's like my all time goal, my dream, what I've sort of always aspired to achieve. Um, I have certain goals that I want to achieve before I stop swimming, so I don't really want to stop until I've achieved those. It's, it's what makes a good swimmer is that you get up and you get on with it, and uh, that's what we train for. We train for the Olympics and we train for the big events. Ha 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 ha!